Hi there and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to make rigged mesh shoes with blender for the e-body reborn mesh avatar. I've included some tricks and tips and time saving techniques so keep watching right to the end and I hope you find it useful and informative. If you want to try making and rigging shoes yourself I'll include a link in the video description to a blender template file you can download and use. I used Blender 3.6.9 long term support version. I think the long term support version is up to 3.6.12 now but I'll include a download link for Blender for the latest long term support version in the video description so that you can download it if you haven't got it. So let me explain the general methodology that I used to create these shoes. I will uh, show you most of these steps later. Let me just get a few things organized here. So I actually used, let's have a look at that one. There we go. So I actually started by creating the insole and once I'd done that I selected the the outside of the insole let me put my screencast keys on I keep forgetting to do that so that you can see what keys I'm pressing And once you've created the, the insole, you can just select all around the outside. Like that. I'm going to turn off Slap 2 that I had on. Um, and then you can shift D to duplicate it. Like that. And then you can go mesh, separate, selection, which makes it into its own object. And we can select that object, go into edit mode. So control A to select everything, or just A to select everything. And then we can do E for extrude, Z for the Z direction, and just pull it up and then start manipulating those edges and faces to form the upper part of the shoe. Let me just delete that because I don't really want that. Um, yep, so once I'd made the insole, I made the upper and the heel. Uh, the bottom sole and the heel in one piece. Uh, once I did that, um, I arranged the studs around. I won't show you this bit. I'll show you a little bit later. I arranged the um, the studs on the shoes uh, uh, as an array around a curve. Uh, and then I rigged the shoes and I applied the material and made some UV maps for them. I will show you some of those some of those points as later on. Uh, so another good tip, use references. I show you my references here. They're images as planes, very simple uh, line drawings that I made so that I could follow that when I'm modeling. If I go to edit preferences, I'll show you how to enable that. Make sure you're on add-ons. Type in the word image. I put a tick in the box. Import images as planes and save it. And um, once you've done that, you should be able to, let me just close that. Um, you should be able to go up to add. And then 
go down to image and choose images as planes um, and you can arrange those and make them as transparent or as opaque, opaque as you like to help you uh, when you make sure when you're modeling that you're following a, uh, your guide that will enable your models to be a bit more accurate so the next tip I've got for you is uh, use collections I've done that extensively whilst working on these shoes um, as I've developed it so that you're able to duplicate the mesh as you're working on it before say you apply modifiers or make lots of changes to it duplicate the mesh put it in a different collection hide the old collection work on the new collection and then it gives you uh, something to get back to in case it doesn't turn out as you want it and it also helps you to keep your 3D view uncluttered um, as, as an aid to working. So that's that's really good. Uh, another really handy tip, which should have been pretty obvious, uh, when we were when I was showing you before, is keep your geometry on your mesh whilst you're designing it as simple as you possibly can um, in my case I've used all quads four-sided faces I've used the least amount of faces that I possibly can because it's easier to change and amend um, and you can use a multi-resolution modifier on it to give it more complexity and smooth it over um, make it look more refined uh, towards the end of the modeling process so keep the geometry nice and simple as you're working so let me show you how I spaced out the studs as an array along a curve on the shoe rather than placing them manually uh, I'm going to do this by just going to a new creating a new collection and calling it demo so I'm going to try and do this relatively quickly so I'm going to add a mesh UV sphere I'm going to scale it right down it's not quite so big uh, I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to say mess mesh shade smooth faces and go to object and I'm going to apply all the transformations so apply all transforms just going to move it out the way a little bit so you now need to, I'm going to create a plane and I'm going to scale that down really quite small I'm going to I will transform to that. I'm going to add in a mesh cube. It's in there somewhere. Cube, there we go. Scale that down. Really quite small again. Okay, I'm just going to move that up there. Doesn't have to be exact. Uh, and I'm going to apply. All the transforms on that. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that I've got all the normals facing the right way. So I've turned on onto my viewport overlays and turned on face orientation, and I can see that it's all blue, which means that's all good. That's as it should be. So next thing I want to do, I'm just going to duplicate that plane. I just want a single. I just want a single vertex, so I'm just going to delete those vertices. I'm going to do uh, edit object. Set forward into geometry, might as well. Uh, and then I'm just going to move that over towards our sphere here. I'm going to turn on snap to surface. You see I've got it to face set to face project closest 
Um, I think that's probably all we need. So if I go back to edit mode, go so vertex, there we go. If I move it, if I press G, then you can see it's underneath the cursor. So I'm just going to extrude. I'm just going to press E a few times. Just making a kind of curve shape of that. Uh, I'm going to hide our sphere. Select the that mesh extruded vertices vertex and I'm going to convert that under the object convert curve and then I'm going to go into edit mode with it all selected and go set spline type to bezier so it's now a bezier curve um, you can increase the resolution and smooth it up by using the handles in this case I'm not going to bother so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to parent our cube cube to the plane so I'm going to select the cube shift to select the plane I'm going to go up to object and then parent choose object now what I'm going to do uh, so in other words the plane cube is parented to the plane so if I move the plane you can see the cube moves with it let me just undo that transformation what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the array modifier stack and add in an array modifier just give that a couple of uh, instances I'm going to go to add modifier again and I'm going to go to the curve modifier and I'm just going to select our curve like that and you can see that the plane is is moving along with the array uh, in this instance you can see that there's no cube on it so we just need to go to the the object data of the plane and under instancing we need to set it to faces and then you can see that um, Yeah, so you can see the, the cube there. We can go back to the array and we can increase the count. In fact, we're increasing it in the wrong direction here. So let's do minus one to increase it in the other direction. And there we go. You can see that it's, it's kind of following our curve. Um, there's an offset there, probably because uh, let's do play all transforms to the curve yeah and that's fixed the problem so you can actually set the offset back to one um, yeah I noticed it was standing off from the surface of the curve a little bit so you've just changed that um, so you can see this is a nice easy way to place instances along a curve um, and we can adjust it um, to, to fit, the, fit the surface as we want it I'll show you the tilt option so if we go back up here uh, you could do that with the end key to show the, the kind of side menu here and if we go to item uh, is item oh we, we need to be on the curve for this let's select the curve and if we go to one of these, is one of these somewhere? There it is. I think we need to be in edit mode for this. Um, yeah, so you need to be in edit mode for that with the curve selected. There's under the item tab there's a mean tilt and if I, if I change that you can see that it's uh, rotating those objects around the 
around the the tilt of the of the curve. Right. So that's um that's how to place the um, align the studs. I will mention now that once you've done that and you've placed them and edited them on the shoe, you will need to make all the instances real and apply the visual geometry to the to the array, otherwise it, it will look a bit odd. Um, so I'm just going to delete these bits and bobs because I don't really need them to show you anything else. Get rid of that. Cube, right. So now I'm just going to show you uh, how I made a single shoe and duplicated it. So let me just see if I can go into edit mode. Just deselect. What's handy? Let me just <laughs> I'll box select all of that one and just delete the vertices. Right. And if I go into object mode on this one, you just do apply all transforms. Um, it's important to make sure that you've done apply all transforms to the to the mesh of the shoe. Uh, in my case, I've got it broken into separate kind of sections of the insole, the upper, the outside, the inside, the sole, um, whatever. But the important thing is to make sure that you're, you've applied transforms to the mesh or transforms and that the origin point is at the world, center of the world, at zero, zero and that in your uh, pivot point options up here you set it to the th make sure your 3d cursor is at the world origin and you set it to the 3d cursor okay you can do that by going view align view center cursor from frame all and that will center the cursor back to the origin point Okay, well, I'm going to do this in wireframe mode. I'm in object mode. So I'm basically going to, just going to select the whole shoe. I'm going to shift. I'm going to first shift and delete. I've kind of got my screencast keys on again. Let me turn them on so it makes it easier. Apologies for that. Um, yep, yeah, so. Select the whole thing in object mode. So shift D to duplicate it. And then we want to go scale on the Y axis. We want to do minus one. And then hit enter. You can see it's scaled now, although there is a problem with it. It's not apparent at the moment, but I will show you what that problem is. If you go to face orientation, everything looks dandy. That duplicated shoe looks wonderful. But as soon as we go to object and transform and apply all transforms to it, um, all transforms, you'll notice that it it actually flips all the normals because we by scaling it. Oh, minus one we, we've actually turned it inside out so the mesh is turned inside out so all the faces are facing the wrong way so the fix for that is to uh, go into edit mode select them all go to mesh go to normals and say uh, you can either do recalculate outside or you can just go to the flip option uh, it's in there somewhere flip, there we go and uh, that is that was corrected if i just go and turn off face orientation so that has now corrected 
um, the orientation of the faces so that's that's that done right so what I'm going to do now once I've duplicated that I'll show you how we uh, parent it to the armature and how we transfer the weights from the feet into the, the mesh shoes so let me do that so if I go to this one here and I'm going to enable my armature to enable the feet and in fact um, I think what I'm going to do is Sorry, bear with me. Let me hide that armature behind the feet. What I'm going to do is uh, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to join all this mes mesh together. Uh, so I'm just going to go uh, objects join and I'm going to go into the, the data section. And I'm just going to delete all these, um, all the weights that I've already got on there. You won't need to do that. You won't have any weights. Um, I'm also going to delete this armature modifier that I've got on there. Uh, we can do this just in, in normal mode. There we go. So let me get back to where we were. So. We've got our armature, we've got our feet, I don't quite know what happened there, that's just gone a bit big. Right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to parent your shoes to the armature, so you do select the shoe first, shift select the armature, you say ob you go up to object, you choose parent and you choose with empty groups and what that does is if you go back to the data um, the data tab on properties on your shoes you'll now see that all these vertex groups have been copied to your shoes so the next thing we need to do is we need to transfer the, the weights uh, from the from the feet into the shoes so the way we can do that is you select the feet first then shift select the shoe then we go up to object and to weight paint we then go into the weight menu we choose transfer weights and i think that did it a bit too quickly so we'll try that again so you choose transfer weights uh, let me just make sure yep yeah, yeah, object Sorry, bear with me. Uh, we do weights, weights, transfer weights. You choose you, so keep it as by the defaults. So data type vertex groups, nearest vertex, that's fine, whatever vertex mapping, blah de blah. Um, you do it by named layer on the first one for the source layer and then just set the destination to all layers and click and then let me just hide those shoes not the shoes let me hide the feet 
on the armature so just to make our working area a little bit cleaner so now if we go to object and weight paint you should see that uh, you should see that if you went down and selected through these vertex groups um, some of them will have been transferred to the shoes and to save you a lot of time the ones that have been assigned the weights that have been assigned to the shoes are actually uh, the knee left so let's lock that um, and the M knee right as well wherever that is M knee they're all in there somewhere M knee right I think as well as right foot and left foot uh, so that one and that one so only four groups only four vertex groups get assigned and if I select them you can see you can see those on the mesh so what we can do now that we've locked those groups we can go to the pull down arrow and we can say delete all unlock groups so that only leaves us with these lock groups and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select each one and I'm going to go up to weights and I'm just going to do a smooth smooth on that one smooth on that one that one smooth and on the last one smooth if we go back into object mode and um, if I know our armature and our feet again we can actually test to make sure that the uh, the transfer of weights has worked by going into selecting the armature into pose mode and then select one of these bones and just uh, maybe that's not the right one should be able to rotate it okay not that one maybe that one uh, I should have named these so we knew what we were rotating but you can see that um, that's that appears to be correctly correctly weighted uh, it does help if you turn on the actual um, sure what options here if I can find it report display names on um, so yeah so would that work okay that's yeah it's because it's <laughs> we need to go individual origins maybe rather than the cursor no, nope, that doesn't work. Don't like that. Uh, active elements, maybe. It's not going to work. There you go. Okay, that's better. Um. Anyway, so it just proves the point that these are all weighted. So happy days. Um. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn off. I'm just going to leave the shoes there. Hide the feet the armature um, because in a second I will talk to you about um, well I will show you rather just the kind of few finishing touches so on my on my shoes here 
um, as I mentioned before I actually created a single shoe duplicated it um, and in fact my shoes were if I go back to edit mode here if I can so my shoes were uh, separate discrete components so I um, I joined it really doesn't matter but I joined both insoles together as a single mesh even though they were the left and right were weighted separately as you saw when we did transfer the weights um, so I had all the studs from the left and right shoes joined together into a single mesh etc etc um, and then uh, but that's entirely up to you if you want to do that it doesn't I mean you could you could import these into open oh, symbol second life now and you could wear them no problem um, what I what you will need to do is if I press L uh, you will need to create UV maps um, if I go to and the only the only UV maps I created uh, was for the insole so uh, this part I don't know if I can okay so yeah <laughs> um, so just for this little dotty bit so I UV map that um, I guess I could show you that if I went to UV UV editor um, go back to edit mode so there you go so basically to UV map it you just uh, in this case you could press the letter L um, you could kind of arrange the shoe into the right right you know looking down on the sole press U and choose unwrap um, so let, in fact I'll show you so let me just do a reset on that so that's that insole isn't mapped at all so so just select a vert press L for select all the linked verts and then press U and then just, just unwrap um, and in my case um, the image I was using was the insole image you can see that that is too in, the insole is too too big on the UV map so I would I would basically just scale this uh, scale it to get it looking about the same as the other the other one although I did these together um, so yeah that's kind of how you how you do the UV map um, as far as the UV map for the label goes you'll notice that let me just swap back to the label got two of these labels um, that happens to be the wrong one it must be the other one than that one uh, no 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 um, so I think probably what I did was on these vertices I probably just scaled them all on the y direction so if I do I've got my cursor in the middle there so if I go uh, scale y minus one and then enter uh, effectively what that does is that has flipped the label um, so that on the shoes the label is facing the same way on both shoes because obviously when you duplicate the shoe it flips everything so you'll need to you'll need to do that um, 
what else what else right so um, to make this yeah and the reason I only UV mapped the insole and the label is because uh, if you're uploading to Second Life you get charged for each text you upload uh, 10 Lindens or whatever it is so by only uploading to it saves my saves my costs so I just UV map the label and the insole and these the other parts of the mesh that's just plain old materials that I've applied um, so and by keeping the material separate and by keeping your your mesh your bits of your mesh separate like the uppers the bottom soles the insoles the insides etc then it, you can ab apply individual materials and uh, to those parts and then change them in world you know change the color change the shine etc um, so also what I did if I go back to uh, this mode and go back to edit mode you can see that I've applied seams um, to uh, the mesh so that I'm um, it just makes it easier to manage uh, changing materials uh, or allocating materials to the mesh and as I said before uh, when you before you import them you'll have to select all your studs and make the instances real and make the visual geometry real um, so yeah and it, because otherwise the studs might shoot about on the screen and look a bit odd but that's what you need to do so um, these shoes are available from my humble little um, open sim grid uh, you can come and pick them up they're freebies and try them out um, similarly they're available on the SL marketplace for 10 lindens uh, the only proviso is uh, the free ones that you get in open sim please don't sell them or import them to second life feel free to copy them and give them away though um, in open sim and uh, the ones that you get in second life well in theory there uh, the, the perms are applied on them so please don't sell them or export them into open sim okay so uh, please do like and subscribe uh, do add in the comments if you'd like me to show you how I made the kind of HUD the scripted the HUD color changing HUD for the shoes and yeah take care hope you enjoyed it see you next time bye for now